Okay, this is a story uh, about a bobcat. Um, I was at my grandmother's house. We were all there, of course, for the for several weeks during the summer. And my grandmother had a black walnut tree. Now this property belonged to my great grandmother, so obviously they had planted that black walnut tree, and it was out by the outhouse is where it was, and just slightly in back of the new barn. Uh, they had another barn that was much bigger, but we call that the old barn, and this was the new barn. And uh, it was also, uh, there was a smokehouse, what we call a smokehouse, because that's where they smoked the pork um, in front of that tree. And so the, the black walnuts would fall and hit the tin roof on both the barn, the new barn, and the smokehouse. Now, black walnuts, when they're on the tree, are green. And even when they fall, they're still sort of green. And they're about this big around. You see that? Now, that's the outside covering of the black walnut. And you have to get all that green gooky mess off. And then, then you have a nut about that big around. And it's very, very hard. It's wood. And the only way you can break it is with a sledgehammer or with a vise, but you, you just can't use a nutcracker because it's way too hard for that. So in the back of the new barn, there was a workbench that was attached to the back side of the barn. And on one end of it, there was a vise, the, the little thing that goes together. You know, you kind of turn one end of it and it'll keep going together and going together. And that's the way we cracked the black walnuts. Now, another way was when Granddaddy mowed the lawn, he had to pick up all those walnuts because, I mean, if a lawnmower hit it, it would break the blade. So he would pick them all up and put them in a couple of bushel baskets. And then he had a flat, a big, huge flat rock in front of the smokehouse and a sledgehammer. So anybody that wanted to could go out there and crack them some black walnuts. They were very good. So I was out in back of the new barn, and I was, uh, I decided I wanted me some black walnuts, so I was cracking them with the vise. And I'd been out there probably 10, 15 minutes, because it takes a long time to crack them. And then once you crack them, the inside doesn't all come out, so you have to crack that part again, and then you only get a little bit out. So the only way to get the whole thing out is just keep cracking, cracking, and then you never get a, a, a black walnut out all in one piece. It's always in little sections. So I'd been out there cracking and eating black walnuts. And um, the back of the barn where the workbench was, was about maybe 20 feet to the barbed wire fence and where the pasture was. And the other thing that, that sort of happened in that same area was the drain from the kitchen sink didn't go into a septic tank or anything. It just went all the way, the pipe was all the way out through the yard and past everything and then through the barbed wire fence. And then the area where it emptied, of course there was a lot of briars and all kinds of grown up stuff because that made the ground very rich and it was wet. So stuff grew real well there. But anyway, that was what was just over the barbed wire fence from where I was cracking the black walnuts. So I heard a little rustling in that little briar patch. So I looked around, of course I didn't see anything, so I went back to cracking, and then I felt something looking at me. You know how you can tell when something's kind of staring at you? And so I looked around, and there was a bobcat. And he was just fixated on me. And of course, the minute I saw him, I was fixated on him too. I just, I couldn't believe I w I'd never seen one before, ever. And there he stood, just kind of legs out, you know, in sort of a just frozen position. I think he wasn't expecting to see me there. So we just, moments passed and we were both just frozen in time sort of there. And, um, then I got afraid. I thought, he's not going to give ground. I'm, I'm going to have to leave. So that's what I did. I just kind of turned around and ran around the side of the barn and went in and told my grandma it was a bobcat out there. Well, my grandma knew what the bobcat was looking for because just beyond 
where I was cracking the black walnuts is the chicken coop. So this little bobcat had been visiting the chicken coop and uh, he was so brazen he had come right out in the daytime to visit the chicken coop. So of course my grandmother immediately went out there and usually what got the chickens was a fox usually, but in this case it was certainly going to be a bobcat. So they ended up putting wire over the top of the the outside area of the chicken coop, you know, the little yard that they would be in there. Grandmother let the chickens out during the day, um, uh, unless it was Sunday when all the company was coming and she kind of left them in during that day because otherwise you'd be stepping in chicken poop, you know, so she would uh, keep them closed up, but they ended up putting wire over the top of the um, wire that was on the outside area, their little yard, uh, once they knew there was a bobcat in the area. So anyway, that was a little bobcat story. So I'll be back in a little while with another story.